Eh, buenas tardes, Diego Urdanet. Good afternoon, uh, France Press Agency. I'd like, I have a question for you both. Uh, Spain's uh, denouncing Russian intervention in the Catalan crisis. Uh, have you talked about this during your meeting? And for the Secretary General, are you aware of this interference? Does this matter uh, worry you? Bueno, acerca de... Regarding the subjects uh, covered uh, uh, with regard to Catalonia, the fact that there has been so many fake news, that uh, the media has uh, with so much manipulation in with uh, things coming uh, from uh, the country you mentioned and also from other countries that we know well. Yes, we have talked about that. And we've talked about how Western countries and how allies and uh, NATO member countries, we need to know that uh, we have to use all the means uh, within our reach to prevent our public opinion from being manipulated. We have to prevent fake news and manipulation in the social media leading to situations that have nothing to do with reality and uh, thus uh, attempting to interfere in domestic or national issues. Yes, we've talked about that, of course. And we've also talked about cyber defense in general and the social media. Today, they are a de facto field of defense already. We've also talked about the willingness of the Atlantic Alliance uh, to make that field of action uh, an active one to not leave it unprotected, to increase our capabilities in that field. We uh, discussed and addressed uh, in our meetings uh, today uh, the reports we have seen about uh, attempts by Russia to interfere uh, in uh, domestic uh, issues in several countries, uh, including reports about uh, uh, that uh, uh, in uh, uh, Catalonia. And, uh, and uh, any uh, interference from outside is, of course, uh, unacceptable. Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, there has been a significant increase in different uh, attempts uh, to try to uh, interfere by different means in domestic political processes. And the volume and the complexity of these attempts have uh, increased uh, significantly. Um, we, uh, we take this very seriously. That's uh, one of the reasons why uh, NATO has uh, uh, strengthened our cyber defenses, but also why we are uh, improving the way we are responding to disinformation and propaganda. We don't believe that the way to respond to propaganda and disinformation is uh, propaganda and uh, alternative disinformation, but we strongly believe that uh, the best way to respond to this information and propaganda is by, pro, uh, by providing the truth. The truth will prevail. Uh, we need an open uh, and free media press. And we really believe that journalists, uh, you should ask the difficult questions. You sh should uh, expose this information and, uh, and attempts to interfere when that happens. Uh, because that's the best way also to make sure that the truth uh, is uh, is uh, communicated in an open and transparent uh, uh, way. Um, more specifically uh, on the issue of uh, Catalonia, uh, that's a domestic Spanish uh, issue, uh, which should be resolved within uh, Spain's uh, constitutional uh, order. At the same time, I think it's important to also state that a strong and unified uh, Spain is good for NATO. And uh, therefore, uh, we are uh, not going to interfere in domestic uh, Spanish issues, but uh, uh, we also follow the developments uh, closely because uh, Spain is an uh, important and highly valued ally. Sí, hola, soy. Hello, I am from the IFE agency. 
I have a question for Secretary General Stoltenberg. Have you come to Spain to ask for a greater contribution by Spain uh, to NATO missions? And what opinion do you have regarding investment in defense? Yesterday, the minister uh, recognized that Spain would probably not reach that 2 percent uh, in defense spending by uh, the year 2024. So that really contribute to our missions and operations. Uh, they contribute to our uh, enhanced foreign presence in the Baltic countries with uh, several hundred Spanish troops in Latvia. They are a key uh, ally uh, in our rescue support mission in Afghanistan and Spain is going to increase their presence in Afghanistan. And as I said, they are, uh, Spain is playing a key role uh, in our training activities in Iraq, especially when it comes to countering uh, improvised explosive uh, uh, devices. And Spain is also contributing to different uh, other NATO missions and operations, including air policing in the Baltic uh, region and different uh, uh, maritime operations, for instance, Sea uh, Guardian. So uh, uh, Spain is really contributing uh, a lot to uh, our missions and operations. And compared to many other nations, uh, Spain is actually on, uh, among all the top uh, performing nations when it comes to uh, contributions to NATO missions and operations. Regarding defense spending, I expect all allies, including Spain, uh, that, uh, spends, uh, that spend let, less than 2% to increase defense spending. And that's exactly what we agreed uh, back in 2014. Uh, but I think it's important to remember exactly what we agreed in 2014 when we made, made what we call the Defense Investment Pledge. That was not to reach 2% immediately, but it was to stop the cuts. Spain has stopped the cuts. Second, it was to gradually increase, and Spain has announced that they will gradually increase. And third, uh, to move towards spending 2%. And Spain has announced that they will then move towards spending 2% of GDP on defense. So uh, I expect Spain to deliver both on the commitment uh, we all made back in 2014, but also I expect that Spain will deliver on the national plans, the plans they have just um, announced when it comes to increased uh, defense uh, investments. So I welcome the fact that uh, Spain as NATO is moving in the right direction. And I would just share uh, one chart with you, uh, because we have actually a quite good story to tell uh, that European allies, after years of decline, have started to increase. And this is a chart showing a uh, decrease in defence spending across Europe and Canada for many, many years. Now European allies and Canada have started to increase defence spending again meaning that a burden sharing is something we really are addressing and I welcome that Spain is part of this story where European allies and, and the Canada are starting to invest more in defence. You can have this afterwards if you want. Buenas tardes, Manuel Ángel Gómez. Good afternoon from the Cadena Copia. I have a question for the Secretary General. Are you worried about the offensive by the Turkish army in Syria? Do you think Turkey is entitled to uh, deploying this offensive? Uh, have, don't they realize that there are Americans supporting the Kurdish militia? Isn't that a problem? Aren't you worried that there could be clashes there between two allies? And finally, uh, is NATO going to uh, take over the command in Iraq, uh, the operation, and when would that be? Uh, NATO will not take over the role of the global coalition to defeat ISIS in Iraq, but we will work together with the uh, coalition, uh, meaning that uh, we uh, uh, will work together with the coalition, uh, partly because NATO is already part of the coalition. Uh, uh, but also because NATO is now in the process of um, uh, scaling up or at least uh, um, uh, considering uh, to scale up our uh, train uh, and capacity building activities in Iraq. So NATO is partly in Iraq as part of the coalition, but we are also in the process of uh, uh, doing more when it comes to 
uh, training and capacity building of Iraqi officers uh, in, uh, in Iraq. But there is no question about NATO taking over. What we will do is will be in close coordination with uh, the global coalition and also with other international actors as, for instance, uh, the European uh, uh, Union. Um, when it comes to uh, northern Syria, as I said, uh, NATO is a member of the global coalition to defeat ISIS. Uh, um, but we are not present on the ground in northern Syria. We provide uh, support to the coalition with our AVAX surveillance planes and training in Iraq, but we are not uh, present on the ground in uh, northern uh, Syria. Turkey is the NATO ally which has uh, suffered uh, uh, most uh, from terrorist attacks over many years. And Turkey, uh, as all other countries, have the right to self-defense. Uh, but it is important uh, that this is done in a proportionate and uh, measured uh, uh, way. And uh, that is the message um, I convey every time I uh, discuss this issue with different NATO leaders, including, of course, with the uh, political leadership in uh, uh, Turkey. I spoke with President Erdogan uh, last week, and we are in regular contacts with other allies who are involved, including the United States. And uh, uh, I urge also direct contacts between the United States and Turkey to try to find the best way to uh, address the challenges we all see uh, in northern uh, Syria. Expansion, Iñaki de las Heras. I have two questions for the Spanish Defense Minister. The first is, I would like to know what the main uh, uh, expenditure programs are going to be, the new investment plan that the government is going to be launching. And secondly, about doubling uh, uh, defense spending over 17 years, uh, whether this will mean a 15% increase per annum. First of all, with regard to the investment cycle that you were referring to that needs to be approved uh, generally at the government uh, cabinet, uh, we are looking at, at a period of over 15 years. The programs we've agreed we need to launch most urgently taking into account their duration and uh, due planning. We're talking about frigates, the F-710 that we've announced on several occasions. In addition, also the flight trainer for the Air Force, the uh, uh, resu resupply for the Air Force, the command and control system, and the eight by eight vehicles for the Army. I've already given you more than three examples, I think. And uh, these are the programs that we will be starting uh, most more quickly because uh, their duration is longer. This is the uh, forecast. We are combining this. It's not necessarily tantamount to our commitment, both in the uh, framework of NATO and the EU, but also, as the Secretary General has said, to gradually achieve over the time a 2% investment of our GDP in defense. Because we're talking about investment in security. We're talking about money aimed at guaranteeing the rights and freedoms of Spaniards. And I would like it to be perceived this way. In addition, in, of course, initially, the investment will be lower because programs al always require low and investment levels at the beginning until they start developing because first it's uh, invest, uh, research and development plus um, it, it depends. Depending on the program, sometimes their expense goes up in others it doesn't. And we can't annualize the information for you for every year with an exact percentage. That would not be correct. I would like to underscore that the Spanish government considers that the ex uh, expenditure in defense is an investment in security, 
instability in the fight against the global challenges we have today. One of the most important things that the, our president of the government has talked about with the NATO Secretary General and in which Spain is uh, firmly committed and also NATO, as you have seen uh, from the words of the Secretary General, is that NATO needs to be very aware and very present in uh, countering this uh, global threat of terrorism. And Spaniards know very well what it is to fight terrorism while preserving our rights, our freedoms, and our safety. And that is no longer done in physical borders. It goes well beyond physical borders. And this is the aim. Uh, this is the spirit with which the Ministry of Defense and the Spanish government is tackling our work for the coming years. I would briefly before we end, if uh, the Secretary General allows me uh, to say that we have known that there has been an information published in several communication media regarding the demise by accident of a lieutenant, Fernando Perez Serrano, in October in an F-18 in Tor at the Torrejon Air Base. This has been published and mentioned in some uh, communication media. This news is absolutely false. I would like to uh, deny it here. That it was said that uh, the false news is that he was pressured by his uh, superiors to pilot that plane. And this has been denied already. And we are doing so here formally that uh, he was under any pressure that Lieutenant Fernando Perez Serrano uh, was pressured by his superiors to pilot any aircraft uh, whatsoever, and not that aircraft in particular. At the beginning of any aerial exercise, uh, preparation is supreme for the Air Force and uh, tantamount in taking its decisions and is so uh, included in all the regulations for military flights. Right now, there is an official investigation underway to determine the cause, uh, the causes of the accident. It is under the responsibility of the Air Force. Uh, their service is studying the causes uh, of the accident, which will be made public. Uh, but I uh, absolutely want to deny here in public uh, the information that has been recently appeared in the press. Thank you very much.